Hey, what's up, YouTube fam? Um, we are stuck on the hill. I still don't have a boat yet. Mine sank. Boat market's insane right now. Can't find a used boat that I want. Not gonna buy a new one because I like taking older boats and redoing the stuff so that I know what I have. So, with that being said, I had a couple people ask me, how do you guys run dredges off a small boat? And there's a lot of people that do it this way. I just figured I'd show you how we do it. It's pretty simple. All you need is a downrigger, some 300 pound mono, a big old 300 pound barrel swivel, a 300 pound snap swivel, and a pulley. So this is our downrigger, and I say ours. This is my downrigger, Penn Fathom Master 625, old trusty. Uh, bought it used, everything I get is used. I have used money, so I buy used stuff. Nothing wrong with it, works just fine. When you get a downrigger, it comes with cable on it. Some people take the cable off because they want the quietness or whatever, or they don't, you know, the cable, when you drop a downrigger, if say if you're live bait fishing for a king or something, or trolling with a downrigger and you have cable on it, it's loud. Well, we take our cable off too, but not because of that. We take our cable off because I want about 300 yards of 300 pound mono on here. And the reason I want the mono is because I need the stretch because I'm pulling a dredge. I don't want it, like a very rigid system pulling the dredge. So, the way we do it, it's very, very simple. All right, we have 300 pound line on our spool. This is mono. We have a 300 pound barrel swivel right here. And that's so it doesn't get twisted up and tangled and all that. I want it to twist nice and freely. We have 18 inches of 300 pound leader, just like that. And we have a pulley. And not a cheap pulley, a real pulley. Go ahead and spend 45, 50 bucks and get you a good pulley. Don't buy no cheap junk pulley because you'll be mad that you did. I mean, trust me, I'll find out the hard way. So, the way we do this is, this goes on the left side of the boat on the left corner. If I'm on a center console, that's going to be your starboard side. If I'm facing forward on the center console and I turn around and look to the aft of the center console, the left side is where we run this. We run our planer on the right side and we run this on the left side. So, what we do is we take our snap swivel and we run it right back to itself. In the rod holder, got these nice little convenient holes right here. We hook it to itself, just like so. Now we have a pulley that's gonna go to our trolling weight. You see how I have a, see where my load is? I have three points of load and it just disperses the weight and, and, and makes it a lot less tension on your boom. Now, We'll take, and I'm just going to use this for example. I'm not going to hook an actual dredge to this because you're not going to be able to see it anyway. It's going to be on the floor. This is a torpedo weight. This is what I have with me right now to use to show you. I use fish razor weights because I buy the um, the squid dredges that come in the bucket. I think they call it a pocket dredge. It comes in a five gallon bucket. The dredge comes ready to deploy. It comes with a weight. It's a five gallon bucket dredge kit ready to go. The only thing you don't get is whatever you're gonna to use to deploy it with. It comes with the weight, it comes with all the squids and everything, and the center the center of the dredge itself has a, a place where you can hook a bait to it if you want to. So, we're gonna pretend like there's a big dredge hanging off this weight. If you're gonna to use torpedo weights, I highly suggest running like two 48s or a 48 and a 32, because you wanna get that dredge down about three feet below the surface. You don't want any air going through it. Well, some people do, I don't. I don't want any air going through it. Now, I usually run it in the second wake behind the boat, and the reason I do that was on my boat that I had. Um, in the second wake, I could still see the dredge. So if I was pulling, say, uh, the neon green or fluorescent green pocket dredge squid, and I had uh, that green flashing back there, you know, for however long, and then you see a black shadow or uh, a silver flash, you know there's something on your dredge. So, with that being said, we're gonna deploy our dredge. This is hanging off the side of the boat, right off the corner, left left corner of the boat. So if, if, if I'm facing aft of the center console, this would actually be going that way, but for video purposes, I'm gonna show you this way. So we put this down in the water, we take a little bit of tension off of our reel, and this dredge will just go back in the water, just like so. Okay, now say we're sitting there chilling, we're watching, 
see a sailfish coming to the spread, I'm gonna say, hey, sail dog on the dredge, get ready. Somebody's gonna grab a pitch bait, and then either I or whoever's in charge of the dredge will reel the dredge in. This is what makes this so easy and so cool and so simple, and this is why we love it. All you do, tighten up your, dr your drag a little bit, and reel the dredge right in, just like so. That simple, it's that easy. That's why we do it this way. Um, we always do it this way. And when I started doing this, the first time we started doing it, we could actually hook a leash to this and then run it forward on the boat and hook it to a cleat or whatever, depending on whose boat we were on. But with those pocket dredges, I don't have to. I mean, this is plenty strong enough to pull the pocket dredges or the strip dredge. This works fantastic on a strip dredge. Now, if you're pulling like a mud flap dredge, you definitely want to strap this thing off. Or if you're pulling a real mullet dredge or a real ballyhoo dredge, it's something with real baits or like Islanders or the fish razor skirts or Joe shoots or whatever, then you're going to want to strap your boom off just to protect it. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty simple. That's how we do it. Um, I'm going to continue to do it until it fails and, you know, we're doing a long time and it doesn't it hasn't failed yet so remember get you a downrigger get them get a used one facebook marketplace um i wouldn't trust craigslist but ebay amazon go to your tackle shops that have like little consignment sections back in the back or whatever or on the front corner of the store and check out you know tell your tackle shop guy like hey man somebody comes in here trying to sell a downrigger you know put it to the side i'll take it i'm um, letting the people you're looking for one i see them all the time on everybody sell them like there's little yard sale sites and stuff on facebook so uh, keep your eyes open for one and get one. This is Pin Fathom Master. Remember, it's going to come with cable most likely. Sometimes if you get a used one, it already has mono on it. But you want to go ahead and replace that anyway. And we replace our mono every year, no matter what. Because you're stretching it, and, and mono has 30% stretch. So when you're stretching it, it's getting hot, you know, whatever. It's wearing down, and the, the, uh, the I guess the integrity of the line is jeopardized because you're stretching it so much. So get you a downrigger. Throw you a... You know, 300 yards of 300 pound mono or 400 pound mono, whatever you want to do. Get you a pulley, not a cheap one. You need a 350 pound ball swivel, ball swivel, barrel swivel, and a 350 pound snap swivel. It's very simple. And when we're not, you know, if I'm actually using a downrigger ball, like if we're live bait fishing, then it's, I don't even take this off. This stays on there. I never take the pulley off. Just hook my downrigger ball to right there, because the way I run my downrigger ball when I'm using like when we're fishing for live bait is my downrigger ball actually has a leader on it, like a an 18 inch leader with a, a release clip, and I mean, that's how we run ours. So that's it. That's how we do it. Don't forget, check me out on social media: Slicks and Sticks on Instagram, X-Rated Fishing Team on Instagram, Lone Wolf Sport Fishing on Instagram, and on Facebook, Mike Slick Dupree. X-rated fishing team and lone wolf sport fishing. Um, if you like the video, give it a like. Uh, hopefully, you subscribe. I'm trying to keep videos coming. It's hard. I'm the busiest person I know. But uh, like I said, we were stuck on the hill. I've had a couple people ask me, so I said, you know what, bump it. I'm gonna go ahead and make this video help these people out. Um, it may help somebody. It may not. If you have a better way of doing it, or you have any tips for me, by all means, please put them in the comments below and let me know. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas and, and ways to make stuff more simple on me. So, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe, and let's go fishing. I'll see you on the next one. Appreciate it. Don't forget, if you're in the Atlantic Beach area, Emerald Isle, Harker's Island, Beaufort, Moorhead City, swing by Saltwater Bait and Tackle. Tell John and Stephanie that I sent you there to say, hey, Slick told us to stop by. Um, they actually have a little consignment area in the front. They're always selling used stuff, um, outriggers, uh, downriggers, I mean everything. Trolling rods, inshore rods, offshore stuff, big tackle, small tackle, um, all kinds of stuff. So go in there, check them out, tell them I sent you. It's a... Atlantic Beach, and I think it's either 501 or 506 Causeway. It's uh, right beside Full Moon Oyster Bar. Anyway, go in there, tell them Slick sent you. You'll love them. They're cool as crap, man. Those are my peeps. Saltwater bait and tackle, Atlantic Beach, North Carolina.
Hey y'all, thanks for watching. We appreciate the support. We love y'all. We hope that y'all like the video. If you do, hit the thumbs up button in the bottom left corner. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. That way you know when we drop a new video. We'll see you on the next one. We love you guys. Peace.